I can't believe I've never made a hurricane before. Hey guys, it's Mono Making Time, and today we're making the Humble Hurricane. This is the new tooling from Avex. In a toss up between the Hurricane and the Spitfire, I have always preferred the Hurricane. I guess I prefer Hurricane like I prefer my man. Rugged and handsome. So I'm finally doing the Hurricane today to pit right the heresy of me not doing a Hurricane for oh so long. The Hurricane was the workhorse of both the Belgian Air Force and the RAF during the invasion of the Lowlands, the Battle of France and the Battle of Britain. However, the Hurricane is wildly underappreciated. It's so overshadowed by its sexier companion, the Supermarine Spitfire, which we've already made one. Although I've only made the old tooling of the Spitfire so far. Yet for me and many other people, the Hurricane is stunning. She is just amazing with her gorgeous 30s biplane-esque looks. And well, that's definitely the case for me. So it's time to look at the Hurricane. There are timestamps, of course, for this video so that you can skip to the bits that are relevant to you, or chapters as YouTube has now called them. Gosh, I'm so excited. Let's get into this. So the hurricane that I bought, I actually bought on my trip to Duxford, where I actually also bought this t-shirt as well for the uh, Battle of Britain. Now that was for an event held by Airfix at Duxford. So of course, whilst I was there, because the event was partly about the 148 scale hurricane that Airfix had made and celebrating the hurricane in general, I had to get one, but I wasn't gonna get a 138 scale one because I mean, the one true scale bitch. But as a result of me going to that trip, I did a video about that and that included a history talk by Liam Shaw. So what it means today is, I'm not gonna be doing a history segment on this video. <gasps> guys, guys, I know. I mean, it just makes sense. I quite recently did the Hurricane video, which has Liam Shaw's fantastic presentation of Hurricane from its origins in Sopwith all the way up to the end of the Hurricane. So it just feels a bit redundant, but if I do one in the future, I'll probably do one. But for now, it makes sense for me to just let them explain it in my video that I've already done. <laughs> so go and check it out after this video, or we'll pause it, check the time stamp on that one, and then come back to this one, if you want to follow, like, my normal video structure. And I mean, plus, with that video, you get to see Apex discussing how they made the 148 scale hurricane, which is really cool. So what it means today is we're actually going to skip to the hurricane in gaming. Now, the hurricane being such a lucrative aircraft, it's so well known, so famous, honey she slays, it's in almost everything. So I'm just going to do a couple of places where you can fly this plane if you want to just feel it in more detail, I guess. So the first one we're going to look at is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, something that we look at very often on this channel. And well, <laughs> this is a freeware model, which means you have to pay for it and if you've got this game through Xbox Game Pass it's basically just free overall which is kind of amazing for this flight simulator. Considering it is a freeware model though this looks lovely and well it may not have the absolute perfect sound package and it may not have the you know perfect handling characteristics or most accurate flight dynamics but it's free. And I mean, besides, if you really wanted to, I guess you could zhuzh it up with some free sound packages that are available online, or even some from FSX, so it would just take a little bit of work, but, you know, whatever works for you. <laughs> After that then, we are going to be looking into a really old game, and the footage you're going to see is from a channel, it's from a video a very long time ago, so it's not one that I love about me. Maybe I'll revisit this game at some point. But either way, this game was called Their Finest Hour, The Battle of Britain, made with LucasArts, and I love that this game is a kid. So I actually played this on a DOS PC when I was a kid, and the footage you're seeing is in a BF 109 shooting down hurricanes, protecting, um, I think, kind of called 111 bombers. But yeah, I love this game so much. I've got, it's just installed in my head, the pixel art of this game. It just means the absolute world to me, and I just wanted to to feature it on this list. Next up, we're looking at the newest release of IL-2. The reason we're looking at this game is, well, obviously it's a new flight simulator. It's probably the best single player flight simulator you're gonna get for IL-2, but also because I was a really cool campaign that I saw, a custom campaign, which is the invasion of Belgium, where you flew Belgian Air Force, Hurricanes, against the invading German forces, which I think is absolutely amazing. So, 
definitely go and check this out. You know, it might not be the most visually stunning, but I think it's fantastic and it's definitely the most realistic life simulation on this list today. Finally, that leads us to War Thunder. Now, War Thunder is something we've featured most weeks for uh, aircraft that I've made. And this is another example of War Thunder having a well-known aircraft and multiple tech trees. This aircraft features on the tech trees of Sweden um, in the finish line of that tech tree, uh, as Finland did use this aircraft. It also features in the USSR's tech tree, and of course, it features in Britain's tech tree. Of course, this list is not exhaustive. That is many places where you can fly the hurricane, but if you have a different game that's your favourite, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> so with that, we're into the kit stray. And get ready because we're back to a quite a long kit stray because this bitch has a long history with FX. <laughs> So the first tool we're looking at is not the one we're looking at today, this is the OG, and this was released in 1972, and it was released with the same box art all the way up until 1975. In 1978, it had a new box art, but same old tooling, and that box art would carry on up until 1984, where Unfortunately, it was replaced by the box art that I hate. I know some of you love this, this box art style, but I hate it. I think it's just so unattractive. It's not gonna snatch a consumer or someone who's never built a model kit to me. Like, it's just kind of bland. Great for a magazine, bad for advertising, at least in my opinion. Happily though, this box art was replaced in 1989 and it was replaced by the box art that I actually remember. Growing up, this is the box art that I probably saw the most and is the one that makes me think of FX's Hurricane most of all. And I know this might be controversial, but I actually think, although this is the box art that I remember the most, it's actually probably one of the worst box arts that FX have done. There's just nothing particularly exciting or engaging about it. And this is not a bad piece of artwork, I need to say that very clearly. It's fantastic, it's a great representation of the hurricane, but it doesn't have the drama of a lot of the other box arts that FX had done, so, you know. Now this box art was actually used all the way up until 2005, if you can believe it, which is astounding, to be perfectly honest with you, and sort of represents a lot of this generation of FX, where it was re-releasing a lot of the same stuff and it was just going through the different sort of uh, overall designs that FX had, but using the same box art. This version of the Hurricane though was also released by Hella, and it was originally released in 1996 and then released in 2009, so had a couple of releases of Hella, but you know, not, not in the same league of FX and the amount they produced. <laughs> In 2005, FX had some of like the biggest releases of the Hurricane before its sort of demise of this tool, which included a Hurricane JU-88 double set, and also it had the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, which this had been part of for quite some time. So the Battle of Britain either anniversary set or memorial flights, depending on which version you picked up, had this tool laying throughout. In fact, I actually had this version of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight that you can see here, and I really love this box art. It's, it, I'm going to be honest, it's one of my favourite box arts from FX of all time. It's iconic. I think it's just absolutely stunning. They used it for a very long time. And come on, FX, bring back a Hurricane Spitfire Lancaster Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. We don't need two Spitfires. Stop erasing the Hurricane! <laughs> So I couldn't quite see where the tooling turned, so I think this information is correct, but it looks like one of the last releases with this original tooling was under the red branding of FX, but before they sort of did their massive re revision where they stopped re-releasing the old stuff, unless it was a vintage classic, and this had the Irish decals in it as well. Um, I think that's this old tooling from what I can see, and it's, if it's either one of, or if not the final release of this tool. From what I could see after that though, there were two versions of the Hurricane that were re-released, um, one as a Mark 1, one as a Mark 2 or a Steve Hurricane, from what I could see. There was also a releasing with the FX Club, which was a El Alamein 70th anniversary set. I really like the releasing of the Mark 1 because it came with Belgian decals, something I wish still came with the Hurricane. Belgium is so underrated when it comes to like aviation, and I have no idea why, because they had like the CF4 to do Falco and the Hurricane. They literally had Axis and Allies aircraft together. They look so cool. <laughs> So after that tool, the Hurricane was released a couple more times. In 2013, it had a Battle of France release, then 
It had a Battle of Britain release, I think, and then after that it was another Battle of France release, which brings us to 2020, which is where we are today. The version that I'm doing is the Hanging Gift Set version, which is still for sale today on FX's website at £11.99, unless you're an FX Club member, then you get a discount, of course. And it seems to be available at most retailers, because, hey, I got mine at Duxford. <laughs> wow, we're flying through this video, it's so weird not having done the history, I feel like a tracer. But I guess we should go towards the unboxing. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and leave a like on this video. And then, hey, we'll go have a look inside this box together. Confession time. I may or may not have lost most of my footage from this because uh, this was around the time where I was going through a bit of a crisis in my personal life. So all we've got is uh, footage of the glass parts, which you can see look absolutely amazing. And these two main sprues um, everything else I seem to have lost, unfortunately, but the detail on these are absolutely incredible. I did do some close-ups, unfortunately I've not got them, and I didn't record the uh, details either, but rest assured this kit is very, very simple, but absolutely phenomenal. Well, as you can see, this is a very standard affair, and it's got really good detail on this model. It's honestly just quite fabulous. Now, as a standard for me, <laughs> I mean, I may or may not have lost a part or two <laughs> during the course of this kit, because I was making two at once, or two kits at once, should I say, which is a, uh, something I haven't released yet, and then a hurricane. I managed to mix up the transparencies in the wings, so they may not look entirely natural, but we're just gonna go with it. The part that I lost on this kit was just the antenna on the uh, top of the fuselage, so that wasn't too bad. I had an MS-406 that happily donated that because, uh, I mean, it was a spare kit without a canopy, so, you know, it might as well be used for spares. So yeah, it may not look 100%, but we are going with it. Oh yeah, and also, although I'm doing the new gift set set, I lost the decals, oh, I say I lost the decals, I saw airbrush cleaner on my decals, and I sort of like, melted them. I boy, my friend, Captain BFC, sent me some new decals. It was from one of the other releases of the new tool. So that what I put on my aircraft, which it was a Battle of France, which seeing as we did French February this year, it feels quite fitting, no? But should I say no? Well, now you know the things that I messed up and you can look for as we go into the construction of this hurricane. Okay, so we're going into the construction of the Hawker Hurricane. And well, as you can see, this is quite simple as a kit so it's not going to take a very long time to build however despite this the cockpit ends up being surprisingly complex considering the small part count of this kit you'd think that considering the undercarriage are relatively simple it would uh, be a, a less complicated kit but what i really like about these new airfix kits is they really try and help show off the designs of the aircraft in real life they don't try and simplify parts so if you look at my lancaster video for example where they've got like the the main central um sort of wooden struts coming out the side of it like that's really cool it helps you understand like the engineering of the lancaster rather than just sticking the wings in and i feel like this hurricane does very similar things with how you have to assemble it at the same time though, this is still a real simple kit. Everything just glides and slips together so, so nicely. Airfix really nail this really fine line of having complex looking objects that are really simple to put together. I found that on the F-35, I found that on the Lancaster, I found it on this kit as well. And I built another Airfix kit fairly recently, which we'll do a video on soon. And I found the exact same thing with that. New FX, honestly, amazing. I mean, look how gorgeous that cockpit looks. That looks complex. It looks fantastic, but it's so simple. And although I didn't catch the footage of myself again, I did lose a lot of my hurricane footage uh, of me putting it together. It wasn't like hard. It, it took a few seconds for me to work out <laughs> which bits fit where, but once I did that, it wasn't hard at all. So once I've got the wings together and I've stuck the cockpit in place, I've gone in with uh, life colors, that sort of RAF interior green, I think, if that's uh, the one I'm using. 
Um, I did get a life color painter out before this, so I think that's what I'm using. And I'm just painting the interior uh, to have that really nice color. It's pretty much a one, one, two coat sort of job. I've not really put too much care into it because I know I'm probably gonna have to repaint some of it later anyway, but it's just to try and make sure all the areas that I know I'm not gonna be able to reach later on are sort of covered and secured. You can see the design of this aircraft though is just so simple, but at the same time, it just has so much more detail than many, many of the older kits. I mean, compare this to the old bathtub style uh, cockpits we used to have in frog kits and even old airfits kits. And then you can see I painted a couple of bits in the cockpit there as well. So there's a few bits painted in wood and the seat is painted in a black colour. Then it's a case of squeezing the fuselage halves together uh, before we get ready to pop it onto the wings themselves. And this reminds me of sort of Hella kits actually and even News of Esther kits where you either do the cockpit onto the bottom or the bottom of the um, the wings forms the bottom of the, um, the, the cockpit flooring. Now this is the rudder pedals and these are going to slip onto the bottom of the wings. So as I say, this, this reminds me very much of Zvezda, sort of, was it the Yak, uh, no, yeah, it was the Yak 3 I think I built, wasn't it? It reminds me of that quite, quite a lot, to be honest. But it just, it's such a lovely kit. <laughs> Honestly, it's beautiful. The kit's pretty much done at this point, so we've got to put on the tail sections, get that all finished off. And uh, there is one more bit of the tail obviously I need to put on. I don't think I've got footage of that, but you know, it's very simple. Just glue them all in place. Got to stick the radiator on underneath. That just pops into the hole very, very easily. You will notice there's a hole behind that, which should have a clear pattern. I actually forgot to put that in. So I later on just went in with some glue and glaze and uh, well, just made me glazing myself, which uh, has become something of a habit with me because <laughs> I did that on my Lancaster as well. The propeller, um, I'm going to be really honest. I don't understand how this works. I've built two Airfix kits of this era and I did not get rotating propellers. I, I need to watch someone else's build. I'm pretty sure it's not even like the instructions. It's just me. You know, like how sometimes two people can look at the exact same thing and get wildly different like outcomes. I feel like that's what happened. After that, it's a case of doing the landing gear. This was really, really simple again. And what I like is it holds. <laughs> now, anyone who's watched this channel for any number of time will know that I have a big issue with undercarriage that doesn't work. Ever since I built my first Alpha Jet, all the way back in, I want to say like 2013, 2014, I've hated undercarriages that don't work. <laughs> even though I was very, very novice then, didn't even know how to turn my pay, I knew I hated undercarriage that doesn't work. And this works beautifully. I am using Revell paint just to make sure I get a really solid bond. I know it's going to take more time to, to sort of dry, but that's absolutely fine. I'd rather do that on these sorts of parts rather than using extra thin, which is what I tend to use on most other areas. In fact, I think I used Revell on a lot of this kit because my brush and my extra thin broke, if I remember right. I can't remember. This was quite a while ago that I actually filmed this. Um, putting the wheels on now and I'm having to use the tweezers because my nails are a bit, a bit annoying to get them on. So just pop them on and then squeeze it into place. And that's pretty much it. This kit is almost done. Obviously there is the antenna on top. I didn't put that on until right at the end and actually I lost it because I threw the sprue away, forgetting that I hadn't put it on yet. So I did steal one from an MS-406, but I mean, you probably won't notice too much of a difference unless you put two of them together. Painting this I did alongside another kit that I've not done a video on yet, so keeping that a secret, but I am using Life Colors RAF set. Um, this is in my Harder and Steenbeck Infinity Plus uh, airbrush, which is one I think is now, um, might be a bit broken, <laughs> which is fine. Um, I do have a different airbrush now, but yeah, this, I, I, I love sort of this airbrush. It was so nice and the paint just, I still use this paint. I've, I've done sort of two more kits with this since I filmed this, uh, one of which was my Lancaster and it's just, it, it flows so nicely. Absolutely beautiful paint. 
And the great thing is about using a, um, a dual um, action airbrush is being able to control the airflow and the paint flow. So if you do want to go a bit lighter in some areas, you can do. If you want to go harder, you can do. If you want to flood an area, you can do. Um, and then I still managed to screw up by ripping part of my glove and leaving it on the plane. So I had to fill in a bit. You're not going to see me paint the whole thing. I don't think it's that much of a sort of interesting process. Uh, so I do go in with the brown, I finish it off. However, to add into this, even though I did the decals much later and I've moaned about the fact I lost a lot of the footage because I was going through like, a pretty bad time, this project just seems cursed because <laughs> I feel I did two planes at the same time for airbrushing and for decals. And I only filmed decals for the other plane, so I don't have any of the decal footage for this aircraft, unfortunately. So it is what it is. Obviously, after I've done the brown, I do go underneath with sort of the sky colour that, um, or like the only sort of neutral colour that they have underneath on these aircraft. And after I've done the decals, I do do some weathering as well, and along with putting the transparency in. I've also done pilots. I did film that, but it wasn't that interesting, so I've not included it here. Well, that's the construction done. There were some things I did after this though. So I tried to fill out the transparencies with some uh, glue and glaze just to try and make sure that it looked relatively normal. Whether we got that, I'm not entirely sure. And the transparency in the bottom I forgot to put in, so I've just done glue and glaze with that as well. Because, I mean, I know it works, so it should look fine. I did also go ahead and do some pin washes with Sistel, um inks. I know I really need to get some of the enamel ink washes because they are so much better and you have a lot more control with them. So, guys, which ones do you think I should get? Let me know in the comments because I'm really considering getting some because doing panel line washes is kind of fun, actually. <laughs> but we need to have a look at this plane. Now it's all finished. So let's have a look at the Hawker Hurricane popping off. I used Life Color RF set for pretty much the entire plane. I use a couple of bits of Ravel Aqua Color for some of the metallics because I don't have Life Color set for that yet. Um, and also because I have a load of Ravel, so why not use some, hey? And obviously, I use Sith Style for the pin washes and also to do the exhaust um, sort of wash as well, just to make it look like it was used but not too used. I didn't really want to do like a really bad damaged one or really used, but I did try and make it look slightly worn. So, like, 
in the front of the wings I didn't do like a really clean line which is what I normally have always instinctively done like a soft blend. I, I actually went with a paintbrush and made it look a bit messier just to try and make it look like this is an active aircraft you know this would have been fighting in the very early stages of the war so it would have been a relatively new aircraft but it would have had wire and tear on it it was battle active you know but as for the kit itself let's have a look at whether you should buy this kit or fly away from this kit. I think the thing that sums this kit up most of all for me is when I was sat in voice chat with my friend Captain VFC, <laughs> to name drop them yet again in this video, but we were sat in a voice chat when I was making this kit and I remember saying to him, I was like, oh my god, this, this kit is actually amazing. And they were like, yeah, it's a really cracking kit. But I was just like, I don't think I really expressed how surprised I was by this kit. I think particularly because I just built a load of helicopters and hella honey, I'm not trying to throw shade at you. Girl, you know I love you. But like FX just mmm. Yeah, you just like nailed it. Particularly having recently built FX's newest uh, starter set release, which was the F35, I've really come to expect that FX's newer releases are absolutely spectacular. And the hurricane really is as well. Honestly. It's incredible. I'm honestly gobsmacked how good it is. Everything just fit. There wasn't any part of this kit where I thought this is a struggle. I think the hardest bit was probably the canopy, which I did it off camera, but literally it was just because you just have to pop the front bit on and it's like a small vertical bit and that's probably because of my nails anyway. Like, <laughs> She's tweezers, guys. It's what I probably should have done. But like, I just, I, I'm shocked. <laughs> just, I'll say it, I'm shocked. I didn't use any filler. I deliberately haven't gone through and so I sanded a lot of stuff down. I just wanted to make this as the gift set as it is, but obviously just using my own paints. FX, we know my opinion on your paints at this point. <laughs> but yeah, this kit is actually stunning. Like, I, I cannot recommend a kit more than I could recommend this kit. I think this is up there with the F-35 I did a couple of weeks ago, even though this is more parts, I think, or at least definitely more parts when you're factoring the F-35, you don't use quite a few of them, depending on which version you're doing. I adore this kit, I think it's absolutely stunning. I think this kit's great, I think this could really help people who are in a bit of a slump with modelling. I think it's great for people who are newer to the hobby as well, and I mean, there's so many aftermarket decals you can get for this in so many different country schemes and if you're into a bit of conversion, trying to do like a 2 c conversion or trying to do like the prototype, you know, there's a good couple of things you could try and do. That's going to do it for me guys, thank you so much for being here. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, consider being a channel member. You'll get previews of some of my videos in the form of like pictures that I'll upload every now and again, which I'm trying to do now, so <laughs> thank you all of you. <laughs> And hey, it just supports the channel too. And you'll get some custom uh, like emojis as well. You can also do a super chat, which just donates to me through YouTube. And if you're not into YouTube's ecosystem, I'm also on Kofi, so go check me out over there. You can support me either monthly or as a one-off donation. As I say every week though, do not do that. If it's not financially viable for you, I'm still gonna be making this content. So thank you so much, guys. You guys are amazing. I love you so much and I can't wait for you to see the next video because it's going to be a real hoot. Bye! Thank you to all of my channel members. You really help keep the channel going. Advanced kits do get a shout out. So we've got Sophie, Mrs. Time Lord, Iron Duke, 50s Bin Man, Crazy Locher, and Explosive Water. Thank you so much for all helping to support the channel and make sure that I can buy new paints, which I've been doing so to invest back in the channel. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I don't care what level you are, you guys rock. If you enjoyed this video, as I say, make sure you hit that subscribe button and there's a recommended video here that I think you should check out. Ooh, it's been chosen specially for you. Right, you hit the link, I'll grab the snacks. Let's go watch this video together.